Hi, this is Kay Amory, and today I'm going to talk you through some data governance training broken down by different topics. The first topic we're going to look at is navigation. And we will begin with navigating within Axon data governance. First off, we will introduce the basic concepts within Axon, how to move around and orient yourself, how to work with the facets within it. Then we'll move on to search, look at how you perform what's called a unison search, how you understand the results of that search and how it's connected. And then we'll look at a specific object and have an understanding of that object with some more detail. Here we have Axon's homepage. I haven't yet logged in, and when I do, you'll see that some additional things appear in the toolbar. We're going to start by talking through that toolbar and helping you to understand where everything is that you'll need. If I choose to log in, I can select my uh, email address and password. You can also set up single sign-on so you don't have to bother with that every time. Once I've logged in, we see that a few different things have appeared in our toolbar at the top here. We can see this question mark, for instance, that is going to be our help center. So particularly useful for new users who are trying to get used to Axon, understand how it works. They can ask questions um, and receive help. They can elect to follow some of our walkthroughs, for instance, the getting started walkthrough or how Unison works, talking about the Unison search, which we'll touch on again in a bit. We can also uh, see the about page, which will describe a little bit more about Axon and what it's about. Or we can contact support directly or go onto the Axon community website, where you can actually share your questions, queries, uh, interests about Axon data governance with other customers and with our support team as well. So that's a great thing to know about from the beginning. These are some ways you can get some extra support. Now. Just to the left of that, we have my name, Kate Amory. I've logged in as this user. Uh, and if we choose the drop down just next to Kate, we can see options like my account. That will tell you some more details about what Kate's responsible for, her stakeholder roles, and such like. You can also elect here to change the language. We can choose a number of different languages to translate the Axon skin into. And because uh, I'm set up as an administrator, so a, a top kind of level of security in terms of what profile I have, I also have the admin panel, which most users won't have. But I'll talk you through some of the uh, things that we can do there, again, in one of the later training sessions. Moving from right to left, we then come to the notification center. This is going to tell me about recent developments, things like if any objects have been discovered by EDC, uh, they've been brought in and need my review. If I've been allocated any additional stakeholder roles in relation to any uh, objects within Axon. Any workflow items. So if, um, if there's a task that's allocated to me that is waiting for my input, I'll get a notification here, a call to action, asking me to uh, come and provide that input. And also if I've uploaded anything via the bulk upload templates, this is all tracked here as well. So that's my notification center. Uh, this is the quick search option, which I will come back to a little bit later when we talk about search. To the left here, we have the create button. Now, this is where you can create things directly within the UI. So if I wanted to create a data set, for instance, I can go to the data and technology category and see data set here. Now, before I click to create it, I could actually hover over this I to get a bit more information about what a data set is, what kind of thing I'm creating, any tips around how to create it, and, and if there are any requirements, prerequisites that are needed before I create a data set, that will be listed there as well. For instance, when you are creating a data set, you do actually need to have already created the system that's going to uh, contain it, and also a glossary item that will describe its coverage, so that there's a little bit of context there. So most things don't have any prerequisites, but some things do, and it's worth having a little look at that eye. Now that's just one of the ways of creating things within Axon. 
You can also create by uploading from a file, which will be uh, that bulk upload route that we talked about. Or you can bring information in from other products, such as our enterprise data catalog. You could bring in uh, systems, data sets, attributes, and lineage actually from EDC. So that would be done via this section. Those are the three main ways to create data within Axon. So it's directly just creating one object via the UI in this way, uh, multiple objects via CSV upload files, or bringing in from another source, such as Enterprise Data Catalog, or we also bring in data quality results from DQ, and we have APIs to bring in data in other ways as well. Now, if we then look at one to the left of Create, we have a dropdown called My Items. This is really just key shortcuts that are going to help you find the things that are relevant to you quickly. So if you're a frequent Axon user, you might often visit the same objects like this customer ID or full name, glossary term or the CMD system. These are all listed in your recently visited, so you can just jump back into them as you please. We also have following, which is the objects that you've selected to follow out of interest because you want to see what's happening with them, updates made, etc. So they are stored there as well. And finally, any objects that you have a stakeholder role on, so where you are responsible in some way or connected to any of these items, they will be listed here. So this is a great shortcuts menu that just allows you to jump in to those relevant items that are interesting to you. Now finally, I'm going to click into search and that's going to move us on to the next section of this navigation training. Here by clicking search, we've come into what is really the heart of Axon. It's an overview of the different facets, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Um, there are actually there are 25 of these facets out of the box, and we can see five of them in view at the moment. So I'll introduce those and then talk a little bit more about the search. What we have here is the data set facet. So that might be anything from a table in a database to a report. There are different types of data sets, but they're all going to be collections of different attributes. Again, this is data that we can bring in from our enterprise data catalog. So uh, attributes within a report could be any of these. And the data sets, as we mentioned, will need to live within a particular system in order to be created. So a data set is a grouping of attributes that live within a system. We should all recognize the glossary. This is obviously a core facet for anyone looking at uh, governance, starting with a glossary of terms, getting to a line on the semantics of key data elements, understanding that we're all talking about the same thing. And of course, another key point is data quality. So we'll have data quality rules with a variety of different scores uh, related to those as well. So that's just five of the uh, 25 facets that we have in Axon. And the thing about the Unison search is it shows us how they're all interconnected. So if I come in and do a search, let's say in the glossary, I'm going to search for first name then that is defined just once in the glossary because it is a concept that only has one definition. But it exists in 10 different places and it's called different things in those different places. First name, F name, customer name. It's always the same concept, one glossary term, but there are 10 attributes that are linked to it. This is the power of the Unison search. It's showing you everything connected. Those 10 attributes in turn live within 10 different data sets, which live within eight different systems. And there are actually eight different data quality rules being applied to first name in the different places it's found. So by performing this uh, unison search, I focused in on a concept, but I'm actually able to see everything connected to it. And I can actually see things in a number of different ways. I've been defaulting to the list view, so that will show me an overview of the items that are connected to my primary item, in this case, my, my glossary term of first name. But I can also choose to see a dashboard view, 
which will give me an aggregate of those related items. So the glossary term first name has eight data quality rules measuring the completeness, accuracy and consistency of it in the places it's found and the aggregate scores can be seen here. So this is an overview of data quality for that concept uh, across Axon. Now, as I say, those are just five of the facets. There are many more, and the ones we've looked at so far are quite kind of core data-focused facets. But we really, in Axon, want to connect data to its business context. So we have very important facets like policy, process and project, which should also be considered. If we take an example of why this is important, it's because data is really only as important as its usage. When we think about regulations, when we think about value, we're not talking about data in isolation. We're talking about the way in which it's used. In order to be compliant with GDPR, I need to measure the way in which I'm using the personal data I have and making sure that it's uh, in a privacy by design way rather than, um, rather than not being designed and not being thought through. Equally, value can be seen from this kind of usage of the data. The data in itself is not intrinsically valuable, but the way in which the business can use it is what gives it value. So all of these different processes are the way in which data is being used. They all depend on data, whether it's risk reporting, performance management processes, complaints processes, they will all leverage data uh, to complete these processes. We're going to choose one system and just have a quick look at how to get into it via the quick search. If I search for something up here, it's going to search across all facets rather than just in the one that is highlighted. So if I search CMD, I can see the CMD system, but there's also different interfaces which relate to it because they connect the CMD system to something else. There's also a customer ID which can be known as a CMD ID, but I'm going to choose to look at the system. And this brings me into what we call an object view. And here we can see a summary of what the system is. There are some tabs which will be common across all objects in Axon. The purpose being that this allows people to very quickly and easily learn the layout of the tool and understand how to navigate it intuitively. So you'll always land on a summary page, no matter what uh, type of object you've come into. There'll always be a bit of a summary, probably a type, which will give you a bit of an indication of what kind of thing you're looking at within that category. And then there'll be things like life cycle statuses and some overview of audit. So telling you who created it and when it was last updated. Also always going to have a stakeholders tab. That's going to tell you who is responsible for this object in various different ways. Maybe an IT owner, or maybe a technical SME in the context of a system. But this is a common page that we'll always have. And you'll also have a stakeholder community who are a little bit broader and will tell you about stakeholders of related items. For instance, this CMD system is used in 16 different process steps. So we can see the owners of those process steps who would also have some insight into how that system worked and was used back to that usage idea that we were talking about earlier. We also have the impact tab. This is going to tell you how the system is connected to all of these different types of data artifacts, whether it be processes, different projects because they're affecting the system, different policies which are regulating the system. All of these connections can be made either here in the UI or via bulk upload. And what they do is they build the connections that allow the Unison search to give you a connected viewpoint. They also allow us to do some cool things overlaying information onto lineage maps and process maps, which we will look at in a later video. The other two key tabs to note are the history tab, which is going to give you an overview of any changes made recently. You can go back further if you would like to see any changes made from ever. And the change tab, where we can see if anybody has ever raised a change request, 
which could be uh, as anything from a request for information like this one to a request for actual change to be made and how that was rooted down a workflow. So for instance, there might be a workflow about creating a new data quality rule for a system that could be followed if the appropriate type of change request were raised and this would be rooted down something like this. So that's a quick overview of how you navigate within a system. Some of the common tabs that we're gonna see, summary, stakeholders, impact, history, and change. And hopefully that's given you a bit of an introduction into how to move around Axon, how to understand the toolbar, the Unison search, and the object view. Thank you. This was our first section on navigating Axon data governance. We're just going to revisit a few of the key themes. In this section, we introduced the different facets in Axon. We saw that there are actually up to 25 different facets available. And I wanted to remind you that not all of these need to be used or even should be used right at the beginning. These are there for you to grow into as and when is necessary. All of the facets are listed here. Uh, we can find more detail on any one of them within the guides and the community website as well. We also have different connections between all of these 25 facets. This is a very well thought out model that has the appropriate connections between the different categories and they're made from the appropriate side based on which stakeholder should be deciding whether that connection is present or not. Now it's a lot to remember if you're starting from scratch you might not always be have this information at your fingertips. So we have one of these slides for every one of the facets. They're also available on the community. And they'll tell you about single hops, so the immediate connections to a specific type of object, or even one further. For instance, a glossary could connect to a policy, policy being what is um, dictating its, its use, and that policy in turn would relate to, to, to the regulation that inspired the policy. That would be an example of a double hop connection. You can see these in more detail, as I say, on the community site. Finally, we had a look at the object view and we talked about the common tabs that are uh, always there for all the different objects. That's things like summary, stakeholders, history and change, and of course, impact. That's where we make those connections we just saw. There are also some additional tabs which may be there on some facets but not on others. You can get to know those as you explore, but generally I wanted to introduce the core uh, themes that are always going to be there. The overview, the ownership, the connections, uh, the audit trail, and the change requests which allows you to keep that data up to date and have community buy-in to uh, contribute to the metadata as well. Overall, uh, we went through navigation together. We introduced the 25 facets that are there for you to utilize when you're ready. Discuss the fact that within each facet, there are objects with governance details. So glossary terms will have things like description, type, and so on. These objects are connected to other objects as well as their stakeholders. And Unison Search is how we can expose those connections and really see a powerful contextualized view of what's going to impact the object that you're interested in. Thank you for listening.